good morning and welcome back to my channel Princess Shelsterini that's me uh, this morning well actually all day it is the 10th of January 2021 we're in lockdown in the UK and uh, probably I've got too much time to myself even though I'm here with the fam um, but this week I have mostly been thinking about non-traditional investments um, and this morning I was just like, God, it often <laughs> things happen in my little brain and overnight I'm like, I'm thinking, I've been thinking about this this week, how interesting it is, non-traditional investments, I'll tell you why it gets interesting. And this morning I woke up and I'm just like, God, I really want to talk about this. I need to, I need to get this off my chest. <laughs> um, I'm like, I've got a video inside me. I need to get this out. Um, and then that also started me thinking like, I wonder if, like, people say, oh, I've got a book inside me, that one day we'll just say, I've got a video inside me. <laughs> Possibly. Which is a bit about predicting the future, which is what I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, so, I mean, usually when you think about investments, people, you know, talk about oh, the stock market, stuff that bores me, to be honest. And I did used to work in financial services, um, mostly in pensions. Uh, and it's boring. Well, it's boring for me. Um, it's risky. Uh, you tend, I find this, by the way, I am not giving out any financial advice in this video. This is just my, my thoughts. Um, and I also, I don't know. Yeah, it's boring. And I really, things that fascinate me it's a bit like lottery winners it there's something absolutely fascinating about somebody getting something kind of in a maverick way like somebody just buying a ticket and then it changing their lives I'm not saying I'm going to talk about stuff that's going to change your life entirely but um it's the sort of stuff that a bit of mystery to, um surrounding it this will make sense as I go on um yeah, non-traditional investments, but even stuff that was regarded as non-traditional, and well, probably still a bit non-traditional for some people, once upon a time, are now sneaking into traditional investments. So, like, um, you can have a personal pension where you can actually, within it, invest in wine or artwork. And, you know, maybe one day people will be investing in... Um, memorabilia well they do invest in, oh, I don't know if you can do that within a pension but you see where I'm going um so maybe today's non-traditional investments will be tomorrow's traditional investments um yeah let me pause there whilst I scratch my ass and have a chocolate okay so I think there's two there's two things that I've been thinking about like short term and very long-term investments um i'm not very i know usually people say you're a saver or a spender i think i'm a little bit of both but i would say we're all made up we're always made up of opposites i can cope with fairly short-term savings like we want to go on holiday next year we're going to save up for it i find the much longer term when stuff's really locked away so boring um, I, I just do, but then I, I think I am, I am quite risk averse. So if I do something, then I ke I keep it quite safe. Um, having worked in pensions and investments and seeing people invest in stuff and it just stay locked away and eventually die and then uh, that stuff get passed on to relatives and then they invest it and that money never actually gets pulled out and used it's it's just figures it's just on paper and it, it's never actually used for anything and that um i find i'm quite a practical person i find that um very unappealing um so, like I said, this is just my thoughts and ramblings. It's not like I'm not giving out any advice, uh, but that's probably a bit of a background as to why this fascinates me. So, yeah, short-term and long-term investments and different sorts of gains, really. So, 
on the short term and I think this is this might appeal to clothing clothing resellers so for instance um there's stuff I was just watching Nicole State and I thought oh that, that what she was saying completely fitted in with what I was thinking about um a little while she is now selling juicy couture uh you know that not velvet what's it called you know that the leg uh not leggings uh jogging suit things which she said everybody was wearing when she was at school she didn't have them and uh five years ago or something when she used to go to the bins in the, in america there would be bins full of juicy couture she didn't pick it up it wasn't selling no point and now it's selling again it's back in fashion uh back in fashion as in people are putting a value on it they want it um it's the new um retro vintage wear that people want to wear and of course with everybody stuck at home yeah you know what it, it makes sense because we all want to wear you know our um soft casual wear and that fits the bill but maybe it's a bit more uh, a bit more special loungewear. Um, anyway, so if she could have predicted the future, she would have, well, she might have done, and also storage can be a, um, something that will stop you doing this, she would have scooped up all the juicy couture and now be flogging it on and making a massive profit. Um, so yeah, clothing resellers, I also want some help from you. Please, please, please comment down below and tell me um comment on any of this but also tell me so clothing resellers tell me the stuff that you used to pick up used to sell really well maybe the market got flooded maybe it went out of fashion in terms of yeah, just desirability um tell me stuff that you used to sell really really well and now you wouldn't even pick up um that interests me so for instance and also Let's think about this. Yes, Nicole was also saying she used to pick up, um, no, what's she picking up now? Yeah, she used to pick up free people and now she won't touch free people. But if you thought about it, but this is this is the trick, is predicting what's going to come back around and actually be desirable in the future. Because if free people's gone out of fashion or desirability and she picked it all up now while it's cheap, it's, yeah, it's investing, isn't it? It is an investment. It's gambling and trying to predict what's going to come back around and it's going to be the desired golden chalice of the future a bit like people um on, on the stock market betting on what's going to go up and what's going to go down um yeah i forgot what that's called shorts and longs or something isn't it um yeah so not all brands not all brands uh then that is the trick not all brands are going to come back around and be worth something one day. Um, so, for instance, I know that uh, oh, I was back in a meetup a long time ago in Oxford, and somebody, I think it was um, Alpha was saying she used to pick up mint velvet, and it just used to sell so well. And now I think I don't know. People still are clothing resellers still picking up mint velvet. I don't. I don't think it just doesn't sell like it used to, but. Will mint velvet be the juicy couture of the future? Will in five years time, mint velvet be like, but from now or 10 years time be so desirable and you know, the hottest thing that you'll make a massive profit on it if you buy it all up now. But then you've got the issue of storage. Um, similar with uh, some other things that I remember I think being popular and then just not selling, I don't know if this is still the case, like Karen Millen, um, and Monsoon was always uh, high street, but slightly more expensive high street, like Karen Millen, and I'm trying to think about the other shops that um, were a bit more expensive brands, but high street, and they also, I don't know if they just got flooded, but with them going under as well, I don't know if that will make them more popular in the future, or less popular, it's a total gamble. So tell me in the comments, I'm really interested to know what you think will come back um, and stuff that you used to pick up that you wouldn't touch with a barge pole now. Let's have another 